हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू फार्मर्स ऑनर आई एम गौरव शर्मा टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्योरीफाइड वाटर सिस्टम वैलिडेशन आई एम ए सब्जेक्ट मैटर एक्सपर्ट ऑफ प्योरीफाइड वाटर सिस्टम प्योरीफाइड वाटर सिस्टम इज ए क्रिटिकल यूटिलिटी इन फार्मास्यूटिकल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट्स सो इन दिस सेशन वी विल बी डिस्कस अबाउट क्वालिफिकेशन एज वेल एज फेज वन फेज टू एंड फेज थर्ड वैलिडेशन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस इज अ टिपिकल पिक्चर ऑफ अ वाटर सिस्टम हाउ इट लुक्स लाइक this particular uh, video presentation will have following contents whatever regulatory guidance which are available they are mentioned usage of uh, water for pharmaceutical use types of water selection of water as per application quality and regulatory requirements for purified water system performance qualification of purified water system and documentation now first things comes regulatory guidance which is available for water systems so these are the prominent regulatory guidance who technical report service 929 water for pharmaceutical use guide to inspection of high purity water system this is uh, by usfda is isp is also having one uh, guidance that is water and steam system it is given in volume 4 in usp chapter number 1231 also talks about water for pharmaceutical purposes and in ip also we are having the same topic which is mentioned about the water system now what are the usage of water in pharmaceutical industry so mainly the usage which are listed over here it is used for manufacturing of pharmaceutical products cleaning of primary containers cleaning of manufacturing equipments which are used for manufacturing uh, of the products for running utilities like your boilers cooling towers etc drinking it is used for drinking of employees it is also used for gardening then uh, broad categories of water are source water which can be either your borewell water or it can be municipal water then potable water soft water purified water and water for injection these are the broad categories source water and potable water can be one and can be different also sometimes uh, uh, it happens that uh, the source water it doesn't complies with bis specification of potable water so we need to do some uh, internal treatment or some primary treatment so that it can be made potable then selection of water for pharmaceutical usage so we are uh, using water in various activities so what are the dosage forms are available so which which type of water should be used is specified over here if we are doing a liquid oral uh, preparations then purified water need to be used if we are doing oral solids then purified water is required to be used for topical preparations also purified water is desired and for your sterile preparation water for injection is required for manufacturing as well as for final cleaning of the containers which comes in product contact so uh, this is shown vectorially that uh, for oral solids purified water is there for liquid orals purified water is there for sterile dosage forms we need to use water for injection then quality and regulatory requirements so whenever we are having a because this is a very important uh, system uh, air and uh, water it makes the 50% of the pharmaceutical requirements so water system since it is very important so we need to know that what are the regulatory requirements which we need to see in water system so that in later on in audits or in our pharma uh, pharmacopeial compliances we should not lag behind so first is output of the water shall comply with the relevant specification of purified water there should be provision for sanitization of the water system so it can be hot water sanitization or steam sanitization 
whatever sanitation mode is there so that provision should be there in our water system moc of the purified water system shall be ss316 l after generation so once the purified water is named then whatever uh, product contact or the water contact uh, material will be there it should be ss316 or highly inert material a storage tank shall be of ss316 l and it shall be jacketed since uh, most of the times we are using hot water sanitization so jacketing is very much required tank and internal internal line finish shall be between 0.4 to 1 micron ra this is the uh, smoothness uh, defines the smoothness of the tank that internal finish should be like this spray ball and jacketed vent filters are very much required these are all regulatory requirements dead leg should not be there in distribution system now what is dead leg if it is more than 1.5 d then it is called as dead leg these are the pictures which are showing spray ball vent filters diaphragm walls diaphragm walls are required since these happens to be zero dead leg in and one is dead leg it is showing that how the dead leg is defined then orbital welding should be there so uh, whatever ss lines we are connecting from one to next one it should be welded orbital orbitally and arc weldings are not allowed in the water system uv light assembly is desired after generation of purified water and most of the times we need to take this after in return loop like quality and regulatory requirements velocity of the purified water shall be not less than 3 feet per second so it comes around 1 meter per second distribution line shall have a slope of 0.52 meter centimeter per meter ideally people used to design on 1 is to 100 but actual regulatory requirement is 1 is to 50 the conductivity sensor on the return loop line with dump sensor should be installed so that any time if conductivity goes out then dump sensor shall be activated and the water should not go back into the tank the temperature sensor come controller on the return loop line so since uh, most of the times we are doing hot water sanitization in uh, storage and distribution line so whatever the uh, temperature is available at return loop line it is required for monitoring those act, uh, purposes the connection of the pipe shall be done with the orbital welding in the last slide we have already seen the finish of orbital welding so all the uh, ss pipe need to be connected in that way only uv light is required to be provided in supply as well as return all the sampling wall shall be made up of diaphragm wall so it is desired that all the sampling wall shall be made up of diaphragm wall now we will talk of unit operations in purified water system first unit operation is pre filtration pre filtration as it is known from name this is in this multi grade filters are used and this is used for filtering the coarse impurities that some insoluble particles are there they are filtered in the multi grade filter activated carbon many of the times the water is having a foul smell or color is there so activated carbon helps in removing the color from your water then comes softener softener is used for reduction of hardness so that calcium and magnesium ions are removed from the your source water smbs treatment this is sodium metabisulfite treatment since uh, in initial stages we are doing uh, chlorination to control the microbiological load so it is very much uh, required that sodium metabisulfite treatment should be there and uh, uh, this helps in removing the free chlorine which is available in the water 
then reverse osmosis reverse osmosis uh, module is utilized for reduction of your oxidizable substances ultraviolet lights ultraviolet lights are used for reduction of the microbial load in the water samples then mix bed or edi so mix bed or edi is used for final polishing uh, of the water in this all the ionic impurities are removed now we'll talk about performance qualification of purified water generation storage and distribution system since uh, most of the times our manufacturer used to give uh, installation qualification and operational qualification so uh, we are discussing here only the performance qualification of the purified water system so uh, for uh, doing it very conveniently we can divide it into two parts first your generation system shall be uh, qualified and then your generation storage and distribution system system should be qualified so purified water generation system qualification in this two parameters we can monitor first one is quantitative performance and second one is qualitative performance in quantitative performance we need to measure the output with reference to design if my uh, system is having a design of uh, 2kl then with reference to 2kl how much output i am getting that need to be measured and uh, generally it is uh, done three times so that uh, the chances of error can be eliminated and correct re reading can be observed general limits for this uh, particular parameter is plus minus 5% of the design value in qualitative performance we need to analyze these water source water source water need to be analyzed as per bi specification if it is different from potable water if potable water and source water are same then it need to be analyzed as per bis specification water after chlorination since we are doing chlorination 2 to 5 ppm chlorination need to be done to control the microbiological load so after chlorination we need to analyze the sample for free chlorine content then soft water in soft water we need to check your ph then uh, along with ph we need to uh, check the hardness of the water the limit ideal limit for this uh, soft water it should not be more than 5 ppm water before ro entry this is a very important point which need to be checked because uh, RO membrane is made up of polyamide and in polyamide uh, it is very sensitive to free chlorine so we need to check this uh, before entry RO entry sample for free chlorine automated uh, controls are also given which uh, checks the oxidation reduction potential so that uh, if any chlorine is there it uh, goes up and the dump wall is activated over there water after ro since uh, reverse osmosis system is used for uh, your reduction of oxidizable substances so after ro you need to check the oxidizable substances test along with the other test water after mix bed after mix bed the water is expected to comply all the requirements of purified water so whatever the specification of purified water is there it need to be applied to water after mix bed and water after uv so water after mix bed and water after uv both will comply the requirement of purified water there shall be some difference between the microbiological load all the above sample shall be checked for microbial biological loads also now uh, prerequisites for connecting the generation and distribution system so if you want to connect both the system then the generation system shall be qualified before connecting it to your distribution system passivation of generation and distribution system should be completed sanitization of the purified water generation storage and distribution system should be done before connecting both the systems now uh, purified water storage generation and distribution system can be qualified in three phases so first one will be phase 1 phase 1 it is done for intensive monitoring of the generation and distribution system so in this all the user points 
will be monitored for two to four weeks and it shall be analyzed as per the specifications laid down. All the purified water samples shall be analyzed as per specification given in the pharmacopoeia, respective pharmacopoeia. Then comes once the phase one is completed and uh, the interim trends and report is uh, completed, then we can go for phase two. The purpose of doing phase two is to ensure the consistency of the water system that uh, whatever my water system is being going to be operated, it is uh, consistently giving the uh, correct uh, performance or not. So to ensure consistency, we do phase two. In phase two also, like phase one, all the sampling points shall be sampled and analyzed for two to four weeks. And in this particular phase, we can use the water for pharmaceutical manufacturing. In phase one, we cannot use the water for pharmaceutical manufacturing. Then comes phase three. Phase three is done to evaluate the seasonal variation. So uh, in uh, whenever the season changes, it is expected that the uh, source water quality will change uh, as per the reason. And uh, when it changes, so what is the impact on the uh, final water quality? It is evaluated in this phase. So the duration of this particular phase is 12 months. In this particular phase, all the sampling point shall be covered minimum once in a week and critical points like your generation uh, point as well as storage point and return loop point this can be analyzed on daily basis after 12 months we need to compile the trends and then we need to prepare a report for all these things then documentation required in performance qualification of water system so first we need to prepare a protocol, all the protocol need to be prepared in which everything should be defined, our general description should be there, after description everything like your training record, specification, sampling frequencies, all these things should be defined in your protocol. And the results shall be captured in the relevant protocols. Trends of the quantitative chemical and microbiological parameters shall be prepared. Once the phase 1 is completed, then the trends for phase 1 shall be completed. Once the phase 2 is completed, then the phase 2 trends shall be completed. An interim report for phase 1 and phase 2 shall be prepared so that the uh, system can be released for the next phase. Once the phase 3 is completed, then the final report of the uh, performance qualification of the purified water system shall be prepared and in this report recommendation for routine monitoring shall be mentioned recommendation for routine monitoring means what should be the sanitization frequency what what are the critical uh, parameters which need to be recorded if alert and action limit is not defined then alert and action limit need to be mentioned over there so all these things should be mentioned in the recommendation section of the purified water system. Then comes revalidation. Revalidation of the purified water system depends on the changes what we are going to do in the water system. If any of the critical change is there in the storage and distribution then we need to go for revalidation of the system.